All right, what is up, my friends? Welcome. Full set review. Dungeons and Dragons Adventures of the Forgotten Realms. In the Forgotten... I keep saying of the Forgotten Realms. In the Forgotten Realms. We're not of them. We are in them. We are in them. That's right. Full set review. Constructed. Limited. Every card. About to do blue. Just did white. Missed that one. Go on YouTube and go find it. And uh, let's just get right going. Right here, right now. Blue. Blue is up next. And uh, our first card is Aberrant Mind Sorcerer. Five mana for a 3-4. And again, it has the, the keyword. It's not a keyword in psionic spells. When Aberrant Mind Sorcerer enters the battlefield, choose to target instant sorcerer card in your graveyard. Then roll a d20. Nerd! On a 1 through 9, put the card on top of your library. On a 10 through 20, put the card in your hand. Uh, obviously, much better if you win the flip here and put the card into your hand. Uh, but putting it on top is not like the worst this is your kind of like your typical grindy limited card. Um, you know, you're playing a lot of kill spells in your deck and you play this thing, stabilize the board, put a kill spell on top and really put them away. Um, it is obviously a little inconsistent because half the time it's going to be insane and be card advantage. And then half the time it's going to be not card advantage, a little bit of card selection. Um, the card's pretty solid. You know, there is a, a theme of dice rolling in blue and red. Um... And uh, this can trigger other things. Yes, it's not a flip. All right, it is 1 through 9 and 10 through 20. We need to be 1 through 10 and 11 through 20. It's a little better than a flip. All right? It's a little better than a flip. <laughs> Chat never misses a chance. Never misses a chance. You are you are technically correct, which of course is the best kind of correct. So a little better than half the time, you'll get the card back into your hand. And then uh, putting it on top, not that bad either. So it's a solid draft comment for sure. Um, definitely super, you know, it's going to be relevant on the number of spells in your deck and then the quality of the spells in your deck. Um... But solid draft common for sure. Solid draft common. Up next is Air Cult Elemental. Six mana for a 2-5 flyer. When it comes into play, you bounce a creature to its owner's hand. Uh, very good top end stabilizer. Um, the kind of card where you won't always play it in your deck. Uh, similar to like Honey Mammoth or like the 6-6 six, six for 6 that gains 4 life. You're not always going to play it. You're not always going to play all the ones that you get. But it's a real good curve topper. A 2-5 flyer will block almost anything. Bouncing a creature stabilizes the, stabilizes the board. Um, just a, a solid curve topper. Again, I would not go out of my way to be like slamming this card super early. Um, we'll see what archetypes emerge in limited. You know, for example, the 6-6 uh, the six, six that gained 4 was like really good in the Kaldine limited format because of how well it played in the snow decks, which is like a really good curve topper if you didn't get a lot of rares. Uh, but... We'll see how, how, you know, contextually how good this card is, but on the whole, this is a very solid curve topper for your draft deck. Wouldn't want four of these in my deck, but um, it is a really good job of stabilizing the board. And uh, two five flyers, you know, that's that's a that's a big one. That's a big one. Up next is Arcane Investigator. Two mana, two one. Elf Wizard. And uh, play, spend six mana to roll these one. Now, before we, before we keep going here, I don't play D&D. Is there some reason why it's 1 to 9 and 10 to 20? Is that like a common roll in D&D? Where like a 1 to 9 does something, so it's a little bit less than 50%? Is that like a common thing? Or just asking. I don't really, I don't really know. But 6 mana to roll a d20. Uh, on a 1 through 9, you draw a card. On a 10 through 20, you look at the top 3 cards of your library. Put one of them in your hand, the rest of the bottom. That is much better than drawing a card. Uh, that is really, really good. So this is a really solid draft common. Um, having this sort of like 2 drop mana sync is like a really... like kind of archetypical draft card at this point. Uh, but six mana, instant speed to draw, always draw a card, but potentially draw a really good card because you're, you're sort of pondering here, is uh, is quite powerful. This is a very, very solid uh, a solid draft common. You know, if you're looking for a two drop, you, it'd be hard to do uh, hard to do worse, do up and do better than this, you know. So I like this card a lot. Um, definitely very, very solid. Um People are saying in chat that it differentiates from, 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 from flipping a coin. So by making it 1 to 9 and 10 to 20, you can't just flip a coin for it. So you have to find that D20 and you have to roll it. That's pretty funny. That's pretty funny. They're going for you. They're going for you. But um, but yeah, so um, 6 mana draw card is good. In limited, yes. It's not. This is not a card for constructive. It's a card for limited. Uh, in limited, yes. Having a mana sink on your 2-drop is awesome. You can trade it off on turn 2. It gets a few points chip shot damage in, and then it's so relevant later in the game when you're kind of flooded and the, the board stalled and stuff like that. So very solid draft common. Uh, I like this one a lot. 
Up next is Barbagate. They mana for an instant. It counters a creature or a planeswalker and it ventures into a dungeon. Now, this card is not really for constructed uh, because I'd imagine any venture deck would want to be more proactive than reactive. Uh, there aren't really any other instant speed venture cards. So, like, this card's not going to play well with your cards. And three mana for a, or a uh, remove soul is not super great either. Uh, and then in limited, three mana, three mana counter spells are okay in limited. They're not particularly great. And uh, I, it mostly depends on what kind of cards exist around it. If your deck is playing some flash creatures and it's a little slower, sure. But I don't think this card's that great, honestly. I think your adventure deck's going to be more proactive than this. And this card is going to be pretty transparent to any good player in limited. If you just, like, say go with five cards in hand, they're probably not playing their best creature. So not very not very high of this card on either constructed or limited. Um, it's all right, but... Hard to watch out for in limited, but I don't think it's particularly great. Up next is the Black Staff of Waterdeep. This is a weird one. One blue for a legendary artifact, which is already weird. Uh, is this live? You're live on TV. You're live to the whole world. <laughs> legendary artifact. You may choose not to untap this, and uh, you can animate walking statue. Pay two mana and make another artifact you control a four four. And you get if but you have if to leave this tapped if this ever untaps it just it stops being that so sort of like a weird um what's that card called scissors uh and soul artifact effect you know um that you can kind of make your junk into four fours the issue is the issue is it does say non token and if you can turn your treasures and your you know things like that into four fours. I'd be a lot more about this card. Again, there's sort of like this like weird theme of artifact stuff happening in the set, but there aren't really a lot of artifact things in the set to to make them work with, you know? So there are some artifact cards in standard. There's Emery, uh, the white cards we saw, but eh, I don't know. It's all right. It's all right. It's, you know, I had a card where, yeah, if it finds a home, it's, it could be really good, but overall... It's okay. It's okay. And then limited, I'd want a pretty solid amount of artifacts in my deck before I put this card in my deck. But if you put it, you turn all of your, uh, you know, your junky two mana artifacts into four fours, it is pretty cool. It's a reasonably powerful card. It's just very contextual. Very contextual. Up next is blue dragon. There's one color for each thing. This is apparently a thing in D&D uh, to name a dragon blue dragon. Because blue dragon sounds like, sounds like a freaking play, play test name. Uh, but... So six or seven mana, five five flyer. When it enters the battlefield until your next turn, creatures and opponent control gets minus three, minus two, and minus one to its power. Uh, super good draft curve topper because you can play this if you're behind and just like shrink all their attackers and have the you know have live for the turn and get to untap with it. Um, seven mana is a lot more than six, but super solid draft draft card for sure. Five five flyer is huge. If you need a, if you need a game winner in your draft deck, this is it. This is it and. Uh, that's all I really got to say, honestly. Just like, okay, you know? Charm Sleep. The mana for enchant a creature. Comes into play, tap the creature, and doesn't untap. Towards and taps that. This is your standard, you know, lockdown aura in blue. Going to be a very high pick for your draft decks. Um, just solid. Just a solid card. Nothing really too exciting. It's just a good good, good kill spell unlimited. Not much else. Um, I suppose it could give, you, could give you devotion for blue in Constructed, but that's probably not going to matter that much. Clever Conjurer. We have a 2-3 three for 3, can untap permanence at sorcery speed. Sort of a weird mana creature in limited, um, because you untap your lands, obviously. 2-3, not the best stats, but if you need a, a blocker and a ramp creature, if you have a big thing you want to untap, this can do that, but not super exciting, honestly. You know, it's kind of like a weird blue ramp creature. You don't see that very often, but it's kind of draft filler. Not super exciting. Up next is Contact the Other Plane. That is some art right there. That is definitely some art. Uh, kind of your standard four mana draw two. Uh, roll a d20. And one through nine draw two. Ten through 19 scry two draw two. So that's obviously, we already have that in Behold the Multiverse. And then if you roll a natural 20, you scry three and draw three. That's great and all, but not very likely. So, you know, 95% of the time, this card is going to be Behold the Multiverse or worse. Uh, actually, I guess worse all the time because you can't foretell it. So 
Not really a playable card dude, uh, in standard. And then in limited, it's okay. You know, if you need to draw cards, I imagine if you have this card and the counter spell, it could be kind of cool, but they kind of operate on different axes. So, um, not really too big on this card. And I usually like format of draw twos, but this one's pretty unexciting. Uh, I'm sure there'll be a lot of complaints about, oh, I was winning the game, and then they rolled a 20 and drew three cards and I lost, you know, but whatever. Ooh, boy. Uh, so, if we focused primarily on older formats, this is clearly best in show for blue. Uh, if we're only talking about modern, uh, you know, legacy, maybe historic. Demolich here. Blue, 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 Skeleton Wizard. This spell costs one blue less to cast for each instant or sorcery you've cast this turn. So, hello, Metamorphose. Hello, Gutshot. Whenever it attacks, exile up to one target instant or sorcery card from your graveyard. Copy it. You may cast the copy. So, essentially, Dreadhorde Arcanist. You may cast Demolic from your graveyard by exiling four, exiling four instant and or sorcery cards from your graveyard in addition to paying its mana cost or other costs. So this is like a weird like mixture of like Dreadhorde Arcanist, Hogak, you know, metamorphose stuffy stuff. Um, definitely, I know this card's seeing play in, uh, in Modern and like Phoenix decks and stuff like that. Um, you gotta pay for the spell, sure, but you're usually gonna get Lightning Bolt back or whatever. Um, very strange card. Very, very strange card. Again, probably good in Modern, Metamorphose, you know. If you just go, like, Metamorphose, Bolt, Bolt, or whatever, and play this one mana, it's pretty cool. Uh, it does die to Bolt, which I think is a thing. Dies the Fatal Push, so it's not like your typical Delve thing. Exiling four instant Sorcery from your graveyard is not uh, not a unreal, not a un, un, uh, not an insignificant cost either. And then this also is kind of battling with Murktide Regent, one of the new big blue cards from Modern Horizons 2, in that that card also wants to eat the instant sorceries out of your graveyards. So for older formats, I think this card definitely has legs. Uh, I don't know if it actually has legs, just a floating head, but it has legs, but I don't know if it's better than the other cards that are similar to it. That being said, in Standard, um, I don't know if it's a deck that can play this card. You know, like... There aren't that many cheap spells in standard. So I'm not like super, super high on this card. It's probably good, honestly, in modern and good in legacy and so on and so forth. Um, yeah, crash through. I do love crash through. But it's just a really weird card. There's a lot of power here. This is definitely a 2020, 20, 2021 magic card. You know, it, it it's cheap, it's recursive, it's very Euro-esque. You attack with it, you get advantage, it's recursive, it never dies, it has cost reductions. But I'm not sure if all of that is adding up to a really good card. I could definitely be wrong, though, because kind of like Euro, it just, just kind of just does everything. So, we'll see. It's a very, very card to, weird card to, uh, to go for. And uh, as far as it being four blue pips for Devotion, you're not usually playing many instant sorceries in your Devotion deck. So I don't think it'd be really, really that good there either. So it's a weird one. Definitely, if I had an award for weirdest in show, this would definitely win it. This would definitely win it. Up next is Displacer Beast. Three mana for a 3-2. Comes into play Adventures, so already happy with it. And then you can spend four mana to bounce it back to your hand. So very reasonable card. Um, it's a 3-2, comes into play. Again, Venturing is not really worth a card exactly. But it does provide you a pretty good advantage. And then late in the game, you can just bounce it, cast it, bounce it, cast it, bounce it, cast it. That's pretty cool, too. Solid draft common. I'm not sure um, if blue is a big venture color. Um, I guess blue-white is a, a, venture, a venture pair. But definitely probably a very, very solid draft common, uh, for sure. Up next is Dejini Windseer. 3 mana for a 3-3 three, three flyer. Comes to play, roll d d20, scry 1, 2, or 3. So not really the biggest, you know, swings there. Now, this card, I think, is actually a very good draft common. And that is because it, this set looks to be a little more like a normal set. Um, Augury Raven was a very overhyped and underperforming card in Kaldheim drafts. Augury Raven was the, the four mana three, three flyer that could foretell for two and then cast for two off foretell. And normally that would be very, very good. But contextually in the format, it just didn't really fit in any of the decks. Uh, it was kind of weird. It was off curve. Your, your your slower snow decks didn't really want it. Your blue red giant deck didn't really want it because it wasn't a giant. Uh, there wasn't really a lot of good places for it. It was just like a weird, awkward card that was pretty good on rate, but just missed all the boxes you'd want to check for your deck. 
Um, this format format feels a little bit more straightforward, and a uh, three-three flyer for four is very good. The big thing here is we don't really care about the scry as much as just rolling a die, which will trigger various things in your blue-red deck. So I think this is a, a very, very high-quality common in blue. Probably one of the best commons in blue uh, for limited. Um, there's a lot of things you want. It's well-sized, a little extra advantage of a scry, a little extra bonuses on your on your die rolls. So I think this card's very, very good. Uh, don't think Augury Raven when you see this card, because I think this card is contextually much better than Raven was in its format. Up next is Dragon Turtle. Inconceivable. Why is there a Dragon Turtle? Who, who, who signed off on this? Blue Blue 1 for a 3-5 Flash. It's pretty good. Comes into play. You tap it and an opponent's creature, and they both don't untap the controller's next untap step. This card's kind of cool, honestly, uh, as far as defensive measures go. You know, you can, you can tap a creature, buy a turn, and then you end up with this 3-5 in play, which is a really good blocker. Um... I don't know what deck exactly wants this card. It is a dragon. There are some dragon synergies and stuff like that. Uh, but definitely a solid limited card for sure. I think this card is just like fine on rate. And I just don't really know what what deck in Constructed wants this card. But as a defensive measure, it does seem pretty reasonable. It's also kind of cool that you can like, if they play a Haster, you can like tap it before they can attack with it. It's kind of cool. I, I don't know. The rate's there. I just don't know what deck wants this card. Uh, but definitely a solid card. Definitely a good draft card. Um, Dragon Turtle. I, I don't even know what else to say. Eccentric Apprentice. The amount for a 2-2 flying. Comes into play Adventure. So right off the bat, I'm really happy. I think any card that says, that says Venture is a card you want in Limited. And a 2-2 flyer for, for 3. While not amazing, I think most Wind Drakes aren't actually that great in Limited. Uh, it's still a great base stats for bonus beyond that. So I think this card is... a uh, I think this card is definitely super solid. Solid draft common. And being in combat your turn, if you, if you finish the dungeon, you can make a creature a 1-1, one, one, which is very good. So you can make your, your ground 2-drop. It's not getting through into a flyer and poke them. Or you can make their 4-4 four, four flying dragon that's, that's, that's playing defense into a 1-1 one, one and now it can't block either. So I think this is a top-tier draft common. I think it's very, very good. I uh, like this card a lot. like this card a lot. Up next is Feywald Trickster. They mana for a 2-2. Two, two. Whenever you roll one or more dice... Make a, a fairy dragon creature token. So as we were saying with the common four drop flyer, rolling dice has benefits. This is one of those benefits. This is definitely an archetype staple. Um, if you're blue red and you're doing the dice rolling stuff, this card is going to be insanely good. If you get one token off this card, just one, you're way there on rate. Uh, two, 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 a 2-2 two, two over 3 that makes a 1-1 one, one flying token is already very solid. If you get more than that, you are off to the races. So very, very solid draft card uh, for sure. Obviously, better in the more, you know, the the more your deck is suited for the archetype, but I think this card is great. Super solid draft card. Super, super solid. Very, very impressed. Up next is Fly, which is almost surprising this wasn't a card name already. Uh, one blue, and it's an aura. Gives a creature flying, and then gives it Venture on damage. So, sort of like a Curiosity variant. Uh, in that, you know, you play one drop, you play this, get in and start recurring an advantage every every uh, every every time it hits. Uh, obviously, venturing is not drawing a card, and then obviously this sort of effect is risky. You put fly on your creature, they kill it. Now you're two for one, and it's not like you're drawing a card. So with the curiosities, you know, you play your one drop, they play a tap land, you play curiosity, attack for one, draw a card. If they kill it. It's still a two for two because you lost your creature, you lost your aura, but you gained a card and they used the spell. So it's two for two. Uh, so without it being an actual uh, an actual uh, draw, that risk is higher. But Venturing is really good too. And the fact that it has built-in evasion is really cool too. So I like this card a lot. Uh, it's probably a very good draft card. As again, Venturing over and over is great. Uh, certainly risk involved in this card, but there are some protection spells. Um, it's a cool card. It's a cool card for sure. Definitely a card that could amazingly, possibly see a chance in Constructed uh, because it is so cheap. But imagine putting this card on C Dasher Octopus. <laughs> hit the wrong button. I don't know what button I was going to hit there. But yes, Octopus is not good. I get it. All right. I called Octopus best in show. I was wrong. Everyone was wrong about that card. Everyone was hyped about that card. Everyone. I was wrong. I was wrong. Grazalax, Ithalid Scholar, Blue Blue 1 for a 3 2. Whatever creature you control is blocked, you may return it to your hand. 
Whenever one or more creatures, so only triggers once a turn, does come down to a player, you draw a card. Um, this card is pretty solid, honestly. Uh, in Constructed, if you play this, you attack and draw one card back, you've already made your, your money back. A 3-2 can tripper for three is very good. So this card is definitely very solid. Uh, in Limited, phenomenal. It's a phenomenal card in Limited. Constructed, definitely possible. Definitely possible. Um, it's definitely better than Sea Dash or Octopus. For sure. Um, what's up, Tannen? And, uh, you know, the if you, again, if you draw one card of us, you're pretty happy. If you draw more than one, I think you're very happy. It is limited. It's not Toski, where you can draw a bunch of cards at once. You only get one card a turn, but a 3-2 three, for 3 is pretty reasonable. So this card has, has an outside shot in Constructed for sure. It's a very solid limited card. And it's mad creepy. Uh, mad, mad creepy art. I don't like it. Guild Thief, 2 mana for a 1-1. One, one. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, put a counter on it. Four mana, unblockable. Um, it's a rogue too, which is like a little bit relevant. Um, it's an okay draft card if you're like a blue white aggro deck. Obviously, if you're able to like, you know, kill the creature. If you get in with this card once, you're really happy because now you have a bear that can be unblockable later. Um, if you're flooded in the late game, you make it unblockable. Solid draft common for sure. Definitely a solid draft common. Um, constructed, probably not, but uh, it's not like that far off. You know. A little Slith Firewalker action. Anyone? Slith Firewalker? Any boomers out there in chat? Tana knows Slith Firewalker. Definitely. Definitely. This card is very good with Fly. That is true. That is true. So, good draft card. Good draft card. I qualified for my first ever Premier Level event. U.S. Nationals 2005 playing Slith Firewalker. So, uh, oh, wait. What was that? Best in show. Best in show. Imerith Desert Doom, Dragonlord Ojitai 2.0. 5 mana for a 5-5 five, five flying legendary dragon. Pretty good. It has Ward 4 as long as it's untapped. Ward means that if you would target it, you gotta pay the cost or it gets countered. So, 4 is a lot. It's not the hexproof that Ojitai had, but it's also a single color, not two colors. Whenever it does combat damage to a player, you draw a card. Then, if you, have, if you had fewer than three cards in hand, Draw cards equal to the difference, which is pretty good, honestly. If you're empty-handed, you can just draw two or three cards off this thing, which is pretty awesome. Uh, so, very, very powerful card. Um, what makes this card really good is how good it is defensively. Because a lot of the problem is, you get to five mana against the aggro deck, you play your Bane Slayer, and you say go. And they untap, and they terminate it, and they kill you, you know? So, having your big five drop, which is well-sized to block also be sort of pseudo unkillable for a turn is huge uh is very very huge this card's gonna be a staple i think uh very very solid competing a little bit with uh gold span dragon but why not both right why not both so definitely uh these cards are very very good uh great curve topper as the format rotates we're about to lose four sets and not just four sets Four really, really powerful sets. Uh, Throne of Eldraine, Ikoria. And this is the kind of card where the weaker the format gets, the better it is. This is just a, a you know, pure rate bomb. No synergy here. This is just a really, really powerful card. So I think post-rotation, this card's going to be an absolute house and one of the big finishers in the format. Uh, very, very good. And then Limited, if you open this card, you probably can't lose. Not that I drafted this card last night in the Special Invitational and lost round one or anything, but likes card a lot. Tan doesn't like it. Tan doesn't like it. I mean, I'm about it. I'm about it. I think it's super solid. I don't think it's like insane, uh, but I think it is the best blue card in the set. So I was never a huge Dragon Lord Oge type fan because when you attack with it, you have to defend it and stuff like that, but it's big. And also the fifth of this is pretty nice too. So is it better than Oge type? I think so. Um, the fifth toughness is huge, and then the trigger can be potentially better than Ojitai, but, um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. The, the fifth toughness is huge, though, because like I said, this is a really good blocker return you play it. So, moving on to Mind Flayer. This is the, the bigger, chunkier Sower of Temptation. Five mana for a 3-3. Three, three. When it comes into play, you steal a creature, and as long as you control this creature, you get to keep their creature. This is your typical... Like, your opponent's not playing removal spells, therefore they can't ever beat this card. Uh, so our temptation was so good against, like, White Weenie and other creature decks that couldn't kill it, uh, because control magic's amazing, and then 3-3 is also amazing. So, 
Uh, it's a powerful card. Uh, it's contextual to what remo removal's being played. Five is certainly more than four, but this card is going to be hell. Oh, whoops, sorry. <laughs> Mind Flayer tricked me. They're in my head. Um, but yeah, this is this card's going to be hell on aggro decks, uh, out of your blue decks. And uh, honestly, I think a decent amount of a time, this card's going to be better than the dragon is, but that's very contextual. A lot of times it'll be much worse than the dragon is. So I think on the average, the dragon is better. But I do think this card's very, very good. Uh, I think this card's very, very good. And Limited's just absolutely busted. And Limited of this card is just phenomenal. Uh, don't underestimate how powerful this effect is. You steal a creature, and then you your opponent can't attack into it because if the creature dies, now you've gained maximum value and still have a 3-3. So very powerful card. Uh, don't underestimate this card in Limited or Constructed because you'll see play in both and then be busted, busted in Limited. Oh boy, we just keep going with the Mythics here. Okay. Mordenkainen. Is that right? Did I get it? Mordenkainen. Six mana blue planeswalker. Five starting loyalty. Plus two. Draw two. Then put a card from your hand at the bottom of your library. And that's a really, really good plus ability on planeswalker. It is a six mana planeswalker. That is a very expensive planeswalker. But if you went out with this thing in play, you are going to be in amazing shape. The draw two ability is basically draw two. Because at that point, you're just bottoming uh, random lands and like not not good cards. Uh, so plus two is amazing. Minus two makes a doggo, and the doggo is going to be twice the size of your cards in hand. So probably like a four four, maybe a six six. That's really good. And then the ultimate, you draw your entire deck, whatever. That, that's like you know sure. But this card is real real good. Uh, you have a dog, are gigantic. It's a card draw engine. Obviously, the only thing holding this card back is the mana cost. Six is a lot, but this is like a really powerful Planeswalker in the vein of kind of older school Planeswalkers where if you play this, you untap with this, uh, you're going to win the game a very large percentage of the time. Uh, so this card is very, very good at Constructed. Bonkers and Limited, obviously. Uh, defends itself. It draws cards. Uh, the only downside, of course, is that it costs six. And until, uh, until Mystical Dispute rotates, that doesn't really help either. So very powerful card. It's bonkers. Not much more to say, honestly. And no, I've I, I never, 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 never played D&D before. Although I might play it on a future, future Mog Monday as a one-shot, which would be pretty fun. More Dragons, or oh, I said it wrong, Morden Kanan's Polymorph. This card has been in like every single set for the last like 10 years, I feel like. Uh, two mana instant, makes your creature a 4-4 and gives it flying. It's an okay trick. You know, it's not a great trick. It's a kind of mediocre pump spell. It is kind of cool, obviously, if you're able to like fly over for the win, the win with it, if you're in like an aggro deck. Uh, there isn't really any, like, plus one, plus one counter stuff in this set, which makes this effect good, because you make their plus one, plus one thing into a 6-6 six, six or whatever. Um, this is, like, kind of card that's just not very good, honestly. Just not super great. Um, very much limited filler. I don't think you're very happy to have this card in your deck. Up next is Pixie Guide. Two mana for a 1-3 flyer, which is already kind of reasonable. And then you, whenever you roll a dice, you have to roll two dice and pick the highest one. Uh, this card's super solid for your die roll deck, you know? Um... Obviously, you're going to get better effects out of your abilities. And then a 1-3 flyer for 2 is just, like, not that bad anyway. So, definitely a solid draft common for that archetype specifically. You have a lot of die roll cards. This card seems pretty cool. Um, archetype archetype staple, I guess, or archetype common. Power Persuasion. 2 mana for a sorcery. And uh, this will either bounce a creature, put the creature on top, or steal it for a turn. Which, honestly, is almost like worse than the other two occasionally because it, prov it provides no tempo if you don't use it for that turn. So a very, very weird uh, like high roll effect because it really changes the effect of the card significantly. Um, if this was an instant, I'd be all about it. At sorcery speed, this card doesn't really excite me. Um, unless you're really aggressive. If you're playing a very aggressive deck and you want to get blockers out of the way, sure. Uh, time Ebb, putting the card on top of the library, is quite good in aggro decks. Um, it's it's a one for one, you know, and then just a good tempo card. But if it only bounces, it's not very good. It's just slow and clunky. I would say your draft deck only wants this card if you're very interested in, in remo removing blockers. Otherwise, not very excited in it. Honestly, it's not super uh, not super excited. Up next is Ray of Frost, two mana instant. Uh, I'm sorry, Flash Enchantment comes into play. This is one of your color hosers. Uh, there's the battlefield. If creatures red, tap it. As long as it's red, it loses all abilities, and then a creature will not untap. So same idea. This card is certainly playable if you're not playing against red, 
Um, you can just keep a creature tapped. And then if you are playing against red, it's a premium kill spell. Uh, it's two mana Doom Blade for the most part. Um, creature loses all their abilities. They can't attack with it and so on and so forth. So same idea in limited. This is a, a high pick. Take this card high in limited because it's so much better than your random common when you board it in. So in 40% of your games, this card's going to be uh, our first pickable removal spell. And the other 60, sits in your sideboard. No big deal. There's so many playables these days that you're not going to have not have enough playables. So take this card high and limited. And constructed, great sideboard card. Great sideboard card for sure. Not quite Aether Gust, but it is very, very solid. Up next is Rhyme Shield Frost Giant. And I like this card a lot as a stabilizer in uh, in limited. In Caldime, the blue equipment that made a 4-5 Hexproof or whatever was a real, real good stabilizer. This is sort of like your basically your common version of the Mythic Dragon, where it fulfills a very similar role. On turn five, you, you play this. They can't really kill it that turn. They can't really attack into it. You untap, stabilize the board. It's got a big body. Uh, very solid draft common. Very, very solid draft common. If you're playing Instructor, you should probably play with Dragon instead, but um, very, very solid draft common for sure. Up next is Scion of Stiga. Stiga? Stiga. Stiga. I feel like I've been doing really well, and now I feel the pressure to keep doing well. I'm a little nervous, honestly. I'm sorry. Three mana, three mana for a 2-1 flash comes into play. You either tap a creature or you ice a creature. Um, again, good card in an aggro deck. If you got to remove a blocker, super solid. Otherwise, it doesn't have flying. You know, this sort of like pester might effect typically has flying. And it doesn't also, doesn't also guarantee that you're going to like freeze a creature forever. So we had Frost Trickster in the last set. And this is a pretty big step down from Frost Trickster. But it is a flash. It does have a die roll for your die roll synergies. It can get blockers out of the way. It can buy you some time. It's sort of a, an okay common. Nothing really too amazing here. I don't know what the hell a tiefling is, but I don't know if I want to know. Someone's not going to ask. Uh, just an okay card. Up next is Secret Door. It's a secret to everybody. One blue for an 04 wall, which is like not that bad limited. It's an artifact, so there are some artifact things going on, you know. And then it's a mana sink, five mana venture. This card's super solid in a venture deck, I think. Um, I think if you're playing adventure deck, you want to A, stay alive to the late game, and B, have a mana sink to uh, to venture off into the late game. And uh, this does that, honestly. It blocks your opponent's two drops, you know, gain, eventually gains some life and buys you time. And later on, you're flooded. Just start venturing. Go nuts, you know. And the fact that you 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 know what you're getting when you venture, um, that's really important. So I, I know I can pay four mana and get up Goblin Blocker this turn, or pay four mana and pump my creature, or whatever. So I don't think there's a lot. This is like a high pick or anything. But I think if you're playing a blue white venture deck or you're playing a defensive deck, playing one of these is not too bad. Definitely diminishing returns. The second one's a lot worse than the first ones. So I'm not sure if I want more, more than one of this card in my deck, but. I think it's a very reasonable card to have in your deck if it fills the roles you need. In Constructed, these cards have seen play occasionally in Constructed. Uh, my buddy Max Teeth top eight and open ones with the uh, the 04 Ox in his blue-white control deck. So it's not like insane, but probably not. Probably not. Shocking Grasp. <gasps> I need a new desk. <laughs> this is a wobbly. Uh, two mana for an instant. Draw card. Creature minus, minus two, minus O. Oh. This is your uh, your good two for one trick. Your tricky limited card. Um, don't get blown out by this card. It should be fairly transparent out of your blue decks. Um, but when it works, it'll be very very good. So decent trick. Wouldn't take it super high or anything, but it seems like a decent trick in limited. Up next is Shortcut Seeker, and I like this card a lot. Um, a two five four four is already a pretty decent blocker. Um, but the ability to venture over and over again is great. And one of the the rooms in the dungeons gives a creature plus a plus and plus one counter. And a 3-6 is monstrous and very hard to block. I like this card a lot. I think this card is potentially better than the 3-4, the white 3-4, if you can put a counter on it or remove blockers, something like that. Repeatable venture effects seem great, and this is a great job of that. I like this card a lot. I think this card is a very good draft common. Um, I think it is contextual to wanting to be a venture deck or being able to get it through. It plays all the equipment as well. That's also true. But I think this card is a extremely high ceiling. And the floor is very reasonable too. Which makes for an excellent draft common. A plus. Likes it a lot. Um, womp womp. 
I couldn't see how much that was because I have the uh, the alerts off. But whoever that was, thank you. And I'll get to that later. All right. I love you. Thanks so much. Appreciate that. Show me the money. Up next is Silver Raven, a one blue, one one flyer at Scry's one. It's been a long time since Sun Suntail Hawk was playable. And uh, I don't think this card's particularly great. Uh, being an artifact doesn't really matter. I mean, if there is some sort of like artifact stuff going on and being an artifact is relevant, sure, I could totally buy this card. But there aren't that many things that seem to matter that much for being an artifact. And uh, yeah, I mean, Arc Staff is a, is a rare. So in your draft deck, you're probably not going to have that. And then Limited, probably not. You know, you know, I, I mean, Inconstructed, probably not either. So I think this, people are going to overrate this card. People are going to see this card and be like, oh, wow, it's a flyer upside. That's really cool. But the reality is, like, this is a 1-1 flyer for one. That's not particularly great. So I think it's all right. Um, it's it's cute. It definitely has enough things going on where, like, if there's a constructed deck, a constructed deck that wants this kind of effect, this could fill that sort of, like, cheap synergy role. But on the whole, like, you ain't playing this over Vault Scourge and Affinity in Modern, you know? Um, so the power level isn't really here. Um, don't think this card should be in your deck in most formats. Most of you have a very good reason for it. Soul Knife Spy. Man, they keep just making Ophidian better and better. We used to have Scroll Thief, which is a 1-3 visibility. Now we get Soul Knife Sky, a 3-2 Ophidian. Uh, this card seems freaking really good. I mean, the the Otter in Ikoria was a 2-2 two -two that had the same text. And it was a solid card, but that was also the Mutate format, so you could put the flyer on it. A 3-2 is even better, because a 3-2 is like your, your bread and butter generic base stats for your like draft common creature. And if this one ever hits your opponent, you're way ahead. Like, way ahead. So, I think his common is very, very good. Um, being an elf. Is this, is this the first ever blue elf? Like, mono blue elf? Aside from changelings, obviously. It's kind of cool. I don't know if that really matters for anything. It's kind of cool. But yeah, I think this is a great, great common and then it'll get better as your deck is better for it. If you're an aggressive deck, you have a lot of removal, this is the kind of card that will just run away with the game. And the floor being a random 3-2 is also very good too. I said mono blue elf, not, not blue green elf. All right. Uh, yeah, but solid, solid draft common. Up next is split the party, blue, blue, three. Choose a player and return half their creatures they control to their hand, round it up. Uh, this is like your big finisher in your blue aggro deck. Like sort of like sleep or whatever, um, in that you uh, you have creatures, they have creatures, you bounce half their stuff and kill them. Uh, I would say that you only want this card if your deck is very aggressive. Otherwise, it just seems kind of slow. It seems kind of slow. Not really super excited about it. Um, no card advantage. Only lasts for a turn. Eh. Eh. Sudden insight. I think this card, I don't think anyone's like super high on this card, but I've been hearing murmurs. This could be like a really good control finisher, and I'm just not seeing it. Uh, Sudden Insight is a six mana instant. You draw a card for each different mana value among non-land cards in your graveyard. So if I have a one drop, a three drop, a four drop, and a five drop, I will draw four cards. That's a lot to ask. That's a lot to ask. And while this could, could potentially draw like five or six cards, um... Six mana is a lot. Six mana is a lot, you know? And the reality is that magic has kind of moved away from cards that only draw cards being good. Sphinx of Revelation, so on and so forth. Because everything's all about the board these days, especially in standard. It's all about on the board and, you know, ready to roll. And even, it, like, what's the... There, there's got to be a line with this card of, like, if it just said draw X cards... What is X that makes this card playable? The line is probably 4.5. So if it draws five or more cards, that's probably reasonable. But even then, do I want to play a five, a six mana blue instant that would draw five cards? Doesn't affect the board. It's countered by Mystical Dispute. It just doesn't, it just isn't that exciting, you know? So yeah, Opportunity is just, just not a card that, you know, is really playable anymore. Yeah, Graven Lore. I was super big on Graven Lore. But it just you just can't play a, a expensive card that only draws cards. It's not how magic works these days. So I think this card looks pretty appealing, especially if you're a boomer like me and you're an older player who remembers cards like Opportunity 
and you know you just want to draw fistfuls of cards into your opponent's turn. But I think realistically, like this kind of effect just isn't really effective in modern day Magic. So I think this is a trap. Um, again, not a huge trap. Not like a, a card people are like raving over, but I think this is the kind of card people will see and be like, that card seems great, and just isn't. And then, of course, there's also the fail state of like, if your opponent has some way to exile your graveyard, this could do nothing. Like, nothing. And that's just not an okay fail state either. So, I think if this card just said draw five cards on it, that's the line where I'm starting to be, be excited about it, but not, not pumped about it. Not pumped about it at all. So, in limited though, go nuts. In limited, if your deck is slow, you need a way to draw cards, sure. But same idea, though, honestly. You can't really just draw cards in limited either, but definitely, uh, you know, if you need a way to win. This card better than commence the endgame? No, because the the uncounterable clause and the creature. Commence the endgame affects the board. This card does not affect the board. And Maddox is all about affecting the board these days. So, not super about it. You could be cute, I guess, and, like, play cycling cards. Like, cycle, like, the 3-6 the dinosaur and things like that to fill the graveyard. But then you're just, like building your entire deck to just draw five cards. You'll just draw five bad cards, so who cares? So, not about it. Not about it. Tasha. Tasha Yar's Hideous Laughter. Blue, blue, one, sorcery. Each opponent exiles cards from the top of their library until that player has exiled cards with total mana value 20 or more. I believe people smarter than me have done the math on this. And they've come to this milling an average of like 15-ish cards. Maybe more, maybe less. You know, playing against Tron... Probably not going to mill that many cards. You're playing against Burn. Maybe it mills 20 cards. This is more of like a modern card for like modern uh, modern mill decks, things like that. Um, and, uh, you know, but realistically, standard, probably not. Mana curves are pretty high. You know, Embercleave, uh, the Great Henge, both cost a lot. So, yeah, uh, I do think the fact that it exiles is very, very, uh, very, very important. But um, I think that uh, this is like a... A big shot mill effect that's not going to matter in most uh, things. You could sideboard against Legacy Lands. That is true. That is that is a pretty cool uh, pretty cool use for the card. But definitely more of an older format kind of card. Uh, in limited, however, if you need a way to win the game, if you're playing like a blue-red or blue-black or blue-white kind of controlling draft deck that doesn't really have a good way to win, this can serve that role for you. But until that point, it won't do actual anything. Uh, so we had one in our deck last night, and like we get to look at... 10 cards from our opponent's deck before we died. That was all it did. So, if you're desperate for a way to win limited, it seems reasonable. Uh, but overall, sorry, it's, it is good against Lurus decks. That is true also, I suppose. It is good against Lurus decks. But again, not like great. So, that's this card. Trickster's Talisman is next. One blue artifact equipment. Uh, invoke Duplicity. Cup creature gets plus plus one and has whatever this creature does combat damage to a player. You may sacrifice Trickster's Talisman if you do, create a token that's a copy of this creature. This card is cool. So the the effect itself, I'm sorry, the, the cost itself of both the equipment and the equip cost is reasonable. Uh, one and two is totally cool. Play this in turn one, whatever, or you play it when you equip at the same time. Plus almost one is a reasonable enough buff. And then you can then sacrifice it to copy your creature. That's pretty cool, honestly. If you say you put this on the, the common 2-1 white creature that draws a card and gains a life, you attack with this, deal three, copy it, draw a card, make it 2-1. This card's really cool. Um, this card plays well with cards that flicker, obviously, because you're more comes into play effects. Um, if you just have a 4-4 in play, put this on it, you get another 4-4. I like this card. I like this card a lot. Um, these cards think this card's super cool. It's cheap, does cool things, and the floor here is just like plus and plus one on your creature, which is also fine. Constructed, probably not. Uh, and Constructed, like, three mana to possibly copy your creature is, like, not particularly good. But um, definitely a very cool limited card. I think this card will make your draft deck most of the time and be pretty good as well. Up next is True Polymorph. Not Polymorph. True Polymorph. The one, the only. Blue, blue, four, instant. Target artifact or creature becomes a copy of another target artifact or creature. That's a whole freak. You realize, folks... That Sublime Epiphany is a legal 6-mana instant and standard? Why would you ever play this card when you can play Sublime Epiphany? Like, target artifact or creature becomes a copy of another target artifact or creature. Uh, I don't get it, honestly. Like, why am I spending 6-mana for a clone? Like, the fact that it's an instant is kind of cool, 
You know, it can screw up combat and things like that. But six mana, the clone effects are good when they're efficient because the clone effect can never be better than the, than the best creature on the battlefield. But if it's like only two mana and you copy their five drop, great. That's really cool. So you target your opponent's creatures too. I mean, I guess, sure. I, I guess, sure. Okay, so they have, a, they, have, they have a big dragon in play. You make their dragon a copy of... Uh, copy of your 1-1 one, one and kill it? Sure. In limited, sure. It's basically a 6 mana removal spell. That's fine. And Constructed... I'm just not seeing it. I'm just not seeing it. I don't know. In limited, sure. In limited, it's basically a 6 mana kill creature. That's fine. But... Alright. Moving on to Wizard class. Let's go to Wizard School. Strict saving, huh? 1 blue. You have no maximum hand size. Sure. Pay 3 mana and draw 2 cards. So, Divination. Okay. Pay five mana. Whenever you draw a card, put a counter on a creature you control. This is a fine draft card because Divination is a fine draft card. And then it's also a mana sink. Uh, definitely not playable constructed. Um, the first chapter is essentially worthless. Um, if you're ever going over your maximum hand size, you're probably just like winning the game anyway. Or you're, you're mana screwed and you're going to lose anyway. So it doesn't have an effect on the game. Uh, drawing two cards is fine. And then having a, an ability like level three is nice. As I always say, limited. Cards of scale are good. So the fact that this scales up as a mana sink limited is totally reasonable. Um, this is a, a medium level draft card. Nothing more than that. Uh, definitely not playable and, and constructed. And uh, not a card you're like fighting over for limited, but you definitely play it in limited for sure. Wizards Spellbook. Blue, blue, five artifact. Tap to exile target instant or sorcery card from a graveyard. Roll a d20. I just can't help myself. I'm sorry. Uh, activate only as a sorcery. On one through nine, you copy the card. You may cast the copy. Note, you got to pay for it. On a 10 through 19, copy the card, and you may pay it for one rather than its mana cost. Please note that one is, a, is infinitely more than zero here because you can't tap out for this and use it immediately. Um, and then 20, on, on a nat 20, you copy each card exile with Wizard Spellbook. You may cast any number of copies without paying their mana costs. Oh my god, is this card expensive. Um, yeah, this feels like a commander card. If this card is in play for a number of turns, sure, you'll eventually get a lot of value off of it. But 7 mana for no immediate impact is just like a, a non-starter in any competitive format. Um, just doesn't work. It doesn't work. In limited... It's still a pretty hard sell, honestly. There isn't really that much, like, spell matters stuff in Limited. Um, if this card was legal in Strixhaven, this card would be really good with all the creatures that are also spells. Uh, but in Limited, yeah, not really. Uh, it's just in general. If you're playing Commander, if you're playing some crazy, like, you know, Kitchen Table stuff, sure. But this card is very, very, very expensive for what it does. Uh, Snapcaster Mage, this ain't. All right, Snapcaster Mage, this ain't. You come to a river. Choose one. Fight the current or find a crossing. So, two mana bounce spell. Certainly reasonable. It can bounce your own stuff, which is good. You can save your own things in limited. And then you can also give a creature unblockable, plus one, plus oh. Uh, solid draft card, honestly. Two mana bounce spell is already like, it's not great, but it's fine. And the ability to kind of just like win the game, you know, up, oh, I have a 5-5, five, five, um, it's unblockable, you're dead, is also pretty cool too. But you would never play that card by itself. So having that that sort of win the game effect on your, you know, kind of mediocre bounce spell is pretty cool. Pretty cool. Solid draft card. Wouldn't play a whole bunch of them, but the solid draft card. You find a villain's lair. Choose one. Foil the scheme or learn their secrets. So we have a cancel variant here. Blue, blue, one, instant cancel. Or you can also draw two, discard two. Sort of like, a, you know, one of the modes on Prismari Command. Not one of the best modes on Prismari Command, but it's it's Okay. Again, Constructed, I mean, Cancels will occasionally see play Constructed, but probably not. There are much better ones. And then uh, Draw to Discard 2 is just straight card disadvantage. Uh, this ain't Faithless Looting, folks. Ain't Faithless Looting. So, uh, 3 mana Draw to Discard 2 is not very good. Uh, so, this card is pretty middling. I don't think this card does anything well. And it's kind of just, like, not super exciting. If this card is in my draft deck, I'm not particularly happy about it. My deck is really controlling for some reason. You see a god approach. One blue instant, choose one, distract the guard, tap it, or hide. Creature gets hexproof. This card is not really worth one mana. Um, 
Giving your creature hexproof is fine. But what made, what made Dive Down and Snakeskin Veil so good was they also buffed. So they were also good in combat. You know, I have a 2-2, you have a 2-2, they attack, I block and dive down to save it. You know, so only giving hexproof is not enough. It's not worth a card. And then one blue tapper creature is also not worth a card. So I can see boarding this card in and limited if your opponent has a ton of removal. Uh, but otherwise, not really. Tapping down is not a good tempo play. Um, one blue to bounce a creature, that's a tempo play because they got to recast it. It throws them off curve. Just tapping a creature is basically a lava spike. I have a 3 3, you have a 3 3. I tap your creature, attack for 3. You untap with it and have it next turn. So, on a card where all it does is tap a creature, it's not good enough. If it was tap a creature, draw a card, now we're talking because we're not losing a card. But it's not worth one card, just tap a creature. So, this card's pretty, pretty underwhelming. Yuan T. Malison. Is that right? 2 mana, 2 1. Can't be blocked as long as it's attacking alone. Whatever it does, combat damage to a player, venture into a dungeon. This card's phenomenal. Um, if you're venturing, this is the card you want. We played this card in Constructed uh, in our venture deck. It was great. Uh, a 2 1 unblockable for 2 is like already quite good. And the fact that it ventures, if this card did one or the other, so if it didn't have the unblockable text or didn't have the venture text, it would still be a top quality common uh, for your draft decks. And the fact that it does both, this card is unreal good and limited. And then a constructed is also reasonable too if you're playing blue in your venture deck. Card's great. Um, venturing over and over again is exactly what you want to do. And this card does a really good job. Uh, super, super good. Yeah. Fly, sure. Yeah, put fly on this. That's pretty crazy, actually. Uh, two ventures a turn. Pretty nice. So definitely a, a very powerful card. That's it. That's the last blue card. So uh, blue got some cool stuff, some dice rolling. Uh, all in all, I mean, again, this kind of those weird artifact things kind of throw me off, but we'll see how that works out. So that was blue. We've done white. We've done blue. Full set review. You're streaming. Welcome. My name is Jim. How's it going? If you're watching on YouTube, like, comment, subscribe. We got more to do. We got black. We got blue. We got red. I forgot the colors of magic. Uh, we have we have green, uh, colorless, and uh, we also have a uh, multicolored as well. So YouTube folks, love you. Like, comment, subscribe. Ten new brews. Look for that. Set review. Look for that. So much content. It's a content explosion, folks. Check it all out on YouTube. Follow me on everything. You're all great. I love y'all. Thanks for watching.